Last year, we checked out the Kindle Scribe, which I really liked as a large screen ink device that can be used for note taking with a very sensitive Wacom EMR stylus that feels quite similar to regular pencil on paper, can be a valuable tool for students as well as for business professionals in meetings, for example. That being said, this is quite a large device similar to the Remarkable 2. It's actually even bigger than an iPad Pro. And so when you're putting it down and note taking, it feels fine. But when you're actually carrying it around, you have to be a little bit more careful with it, not to mention just taking a bit more space inside of your bag. Also, these large screen ink note taking devices are quite expensive with the Remarkable 2 selling for around $300. And that's not even factoring additional features that you can unlock with a monthly subscription, which is why in today's video, we're taking a closer look at the original generation MobiScribe. This is supposed to be one of the more budget conscious e-ink note taking devices out there, which can be found for under $100 at times on their website, although quantities are limited, as well as on the used marketplace via Amazon slash eBay. That being said, it's a much more compact device, more specifically measuring 6.8 inches diagonally. And I actually think it's a pretty interesting form factor because it's going to be a lot easier to carry around, even holding into one hand. If you are doing some ebook reading as well, it doesn't feel quite as heavy. So what's neat is that this original gen MobiScribe also comes included with a folio case. And in fact, this is a case that doesn't seem to be detachable from the back of the device. We'll take a closer look at it in a moment. I just point that out because the Kindle Scribe as well as the Remarkable do not come with any cases as part of the MRSP. So you have to pay on top of that if you want some protection. And in the Remarkable's case, it doesn't even come with the Wacom stylus. You have to pay an additional amount just to get the pen, which is pretty much a critical part of the functionality. All of this is included out of the box with the MobiScribe. And this model does also have a backlight as well that you can optionally turn on. It behaves very similar to printed text on a book. And the brighter the external conditions are, sometimes it's easier, in fact, to even see the screen. But then when you are in a low light condition, you can flick it on and it's quite a consistent backlight as well, which by the way, is a feature missing on the Remarkable. Here's also an example of how bright it can get if you are in a completely dark environment. So you can change the brightness level there as well as the color temperature. Right now it's a bit more cold and this is the more warm slash yellow shade. The MobiScribe devices are all running on a version of Android. And that means you can technically do more than just no taking as well as reading back books. It's not quite as a lockdown as on the Kindle devices or remarkable for that case. You are able to install and sideload APKs on here if you want to add additional apps similar to on a smartphone or a tablet. The device here only weighs about eight ounces, so quite light as you're holding it, not stressful at all. The felt like material of the case feels really soft and there is a magnetic latch here on the side that closes everything up. And when you are flipping it open, you can still use the magnet to clamp things shut on the other side, as you can tell here. And otherwise, the reader itself on the bottom features a micro SD card slot to expand on the one gigabyte of built in storage. It uses micro USB for charging. Definitely would have preferred USB type C, but it is what it is, especially as a more affordable e-reading slash e-note taking device. The very top feature is the dedicated glow light button as well as the power key and that is it. Now the magnetic case I will say does not really interact with power per se on this device. So if you open up the case it doesn't automatically turn on unlike the Remarkable and Kindle Scribe which have that extra sensor. So you still have to tap on the power key there once on the top and when it's turned off it will display a static image and as we've touched on in prior videos e-ink does not consume any power when you're not refreshing the screen. So it can it forever on the static image and it will cycle through some different images built into the memory like this one says big ideas and you can also take a look at this one called on pause so on and so forth they all look reasonably attractive on the side here there's a slot for the included wacom emr stylus pen so this is going to work also with the remarkable as well as the kindle and vice versa you can pick up other wacom emr stylus pens and they will work on this device as well it's quite sensitive, doesn't require any battery to charge, similar to on a Samsung Galaxy Note device as well. Now this pen is also a little bit functionally speaking better than the one that comes included with the Kindle Scribe, the basic pen, just because it has a eraser on the end. Now the Scribe Premium pen does also have that functionality, but again, the basic one omits it. So you have to use the back key or use the software on the screen to erase things. Whereas on the MobiScribe pen, you're able to just flip it around for erasing and then the other side for writing, it feels quite intuitive. Here it is next to the aforementioned Kindle Scribe stylus, which you can tell is just a touch longer. This one's also a little bit heavier, having some type of soft touch rubber coating compared to more of a plain plastic. But the MobiScribe stylus is 
kind of resembling a standard pencil and having a little bit more angles to it, which also prevents it from sliding around on the surface if you set it onto a table, for example. Now the screen on this reader, just like on the aforementioned basic Kindles, are slightly recessed from the plastic frame, as you can tell, as opposed to being completely flush. And I actually do kind of like this decision because it gives you a more noticeable ledge when you are sliding your fingers across it for turning pages, for example, since it doesn't have any dedicated page turn functions when you are reading. Compared to a completely flush screen, which might look a little bit more aesthetically pleasing, you get less of a tactile sensation as you are swiping with your fingers. So anyways, jumping into the main UI here next, uh, we are presented with a pretty simple layout with one gigabyte of RAM and technically a quad-core processor underneath the hood. It's by no means the fastest device in the world, coupled with, again, slightly slower refresh rate of e-ink display tech in general, means that some of the transitions aren't going to feel extremely zippy, but still decent if you're mostly keeping just one or two apps running in the background. If you're doing too much multitasking, you would be better off by closing up some of the unused background apps to make the system feel a little bit more zippy and fast. So anyways, we can go back home and jump into our first note, and we can see that this is what the layout is like. You can change the texture of the pen, whether it's completely black or if you want it to appear almost like a charcoal texture instead. I'll tap on OK here, and you can see that it looks something like this instead. Definitely looks quite convincing to pen and paper, so this gives you good pressure sensitivity, whereby pressing harder on the screen will result in a darker line versus a lighter line if you're pressing super light, so it can change the pressure accordingly, again very similar to a regular pencil and pen. Of course, aside from the stylus, again this is still a capacitive touchscreen, so you can use your fingers as well if you prefer. And there are three types of pens that you can also select between, whether it's more of a regular ink pen where it's going to be a more consistent stroke regardless of how hard you're pressing versus more of a calligraphy pen that has kind of an interesting shape to it when you're writing and jotting things down, if you are trying to sign documents, for example. And there's also one here at the end, which is kind of a paintbrush style as well. You can change the thickness of these strokes as well, larger versus smaller. It is also worth mentioning that MobyScribe have since released some upgraded models that are available, including their Wave series, and they have a color ink variant now available on the market as well, though that is much pricier, almost double the cost at sub $300. You like reading back comics, it could be worth considering. But obviously this is a conventional black and white monochrome e-ink panel. Now down below here you can also choose between adding in some kind of column layout, almost like a table. So you can drag this out, resize it, enter different values inside as well. You can also enter text as well. So let's say I want to tap on this particular region, it will then pull up a QWERTY keyboard down below. And it seems to be decent when it comes to still responding to your touch, even if the screen itself doesn't have the fastest refresh rate. And you can still type things out, and if you're satisfied, click on OK. You can then resize the window, drag it around, and place it on the spot that you want. You can also tap on the eraser there manually, or of course just use the end cap here by flicking it around, and then just pressing on the region you want to erase. Now, I will say that the responsiveness of the eraser, though, doesn't seem to be quite as good as on the Remarkable 2, which you can erase just portions of elements that you've drawn on. Uh, for example, only this part in between, but if you tap on it here, it will actually erase the entire stroke that you've drawn on. So for artists that are trying to doodle and you want to erase very fine details, that is something to keep in mind. That is perhaps a limitation on the first gen MobyScribe, even though the actual writing experience can get very fine details and it still seems to be relatively responsive. Now on the side here, you can also tap on this key to choose the type of paper as the background layout. So for example, this is a default kind of white paper, but I can also convert it into something like a lined paper instead if I want to write out a letter, for example, or you can also change it into a grid layout if you're trying to do math or calculations and download even more custom templates that we'll see later on this video as well that are available from their Mobi store. So there's also one here for music, if you're trying to draw in notes for instance, so on and so forth. And what is really nice about the Mobi scribe is that the templates are only applicable to the current page that you're on compared to the Kindle Scribe's earlier software made it so that if you set up one of the templates, it would apply to the entire notebook. Uh, on here, for example, I can swipe over to the next page and you can tell I have a checklist applied on this page, but it's not gonna carry over 
over to the other pages if you want that level of granularity. You can also favorite certain pages to make it easier to reference later. There's also a search functionality which will look through keywords and also presents you with a snapshot of all the pages inside of the notebook here at a glance. More advanced settings allow you to change the margin size whether you want it to be set up here or not as well as screen refresh frequency. So by default it will refresh itself every six page turns. This is just to consume a little bit less power as well as not to have the screen flash every single time that you're turning pages as you can tell there. But of course when it does refresh it will clear everything from the background, remove any of the ghosting or artifacts that you might see as a result of the ink technology. Full screen the entire note that I'm taking without any of the margins there taken up by the settings or I can bring that back just by tapping on this key as well as delete by going back and forward undo there at the very top. So it's actually quite easy to operate and overall again the pressure sensitivity does make it a pretty good e-note taking device. Since you have essentially unlimited pages to work with because everything here is digital I'd actually kind of prefer a smaller device like this which is a perfect medium for just easily carrying around. It has less chance of breaking as well since the screen is smaller and less fragile in that sense that I can throw it around more quickly and still does the job of what I want it to do. Additional settings, you're able to turn on and off Wi-Fi, although what's interesting is that it looks like the first gen MobiScribe doesn't have built-in Bluetooth. So unfortunately you aren't able to say connect to wireless headphones or a Bluetooth keyboard. I think that's a little bit of a missed opportunity because you aren't going to be able to use this for audiobooks, for example. And similarly, if you had a Bluetooth keyboard compatibility, you can use this as almost like a typewriter with a black and white screen, offering a distraction-free experience for writing out things like emails without having to use handwriting as another alternative. But unfortunately, that capability isn't found on this first-gen model. Also, because this is an earlier-gen unit, the technical Android version, as you can tell here, is KitKat. So it is by no means the most up-to-date version of Android that you'll find, even though for simple things like note-taking, I suppose it doesn't really matter. But when you are sideloading any APKs, just remember to find a version that is Android 4.4 or below for the best compatibility. Now one function I forgot to mention earlier inside of the notebook is you can tap on the three dots next to the way to rename this notebook, but you can also create another duplicate copy of the same exact notebook. However, there is no handwriting transcription or OCR available on this first gen model. MobiScribe claims that that would require more processing resources and so it's only available on their later gen models. That being said, you can still email a copy of this note. Since it is connected to Wi-Fi, you're able to send it into your own inbox. You can even choose select pages that you want to send as well and it's a pretty fast process. And what's kind of neat here is it saves the previous email aliases that you've used. So you can find them quickly under your contacts for resending to the same inbox in the future compared to on Kindle Scribe, at least when it first came out, didn't have a way for you to save the emails that you were typing in. You had to retype it every single time. And it looks something like this. There's only about a minute or so's latency before it shows up in your inbox, and then you're able to expand the view on your computer, on your phone, and you can see that the overall copy here is done quite well. The same pressure sensitivity is retained. And as far as battery life is concerned, I would say it's decent, although it's not going to be the longest lasting e-reader in this regard. This will still get you through at least a week or so of note taking and reviewing before you have to recharge it. But that also depends on how much you are turning on the backlight. If you have it on at the brightest level the entire time, it's going to be a lot closer to only about two or three days instead. Versus if you have it off, it might last you again closer to a week. I will say that because it is running on a version of Android as opposed to a more optimized proprietary operating system, arguably battery optimization might not be quite as favorable in that sense. So as you guys know, with an Android smartphone, there tends to be, let's say, 2 or 3% battery drain overnight. And you can kind of expect that same thing happening behind the scenes on here, even if the display itself is relatively energy efficient. Anyways, here's a quick look at the calendar, which as aforementioned, you can tap on to add additional memos, including the ability to even draw down below here uh, immediately. And if you go back, you can tell that there will be a slight logo that you've drawn directly on that spot. You can link a note specifically to this 
particular spot on the calendar, as well as create an event, which is again quite similar to on an Android smartphone, pop up in the system on the very top bar essentially that tells you something is coming up on this day and you can tap inside to learn a little bit more. So this almost reminds me of something like a Palm PDA or a Pocket PC from back in the day where you can also set up different alerts in the calendar and scribble things down using the graffiti touchscreen. But obviously it doesn't have quite a sophisticated functionality. The screen is by no means as nice looking as the ink panel with its pure white background. The stylus doesn't have pressure sensitivity support and you have just a much more crammed experience, although it is more compact. And again, kind of the Goldilocks of size of something just being maybe a little bit too small, something in the middle versus something extra large. And as far as documents and books in the second tab, if we take a look at some examples, this one here is a EPUB file. It'll look something like this, taking just a split second for it to load up. You also have the time information being displayed at the bottom left hand corner and how far along you are in this timeline view down below. Page turns also are responsive enough. Tapping once will also pull up some additional options, including changing the size of the text. You're able to do so as well as change the alignment and even the line spacing size can also be adjusted as well as you can tell there and it all works relatively well. You can search for specific keywords, take a look at your progress, go through chapter by chapter as well as rotate the screen orientation as well and this will flip it over into a view like this having two panels. Now of course one downside here of having a smaller size screen is compared to the Kindle Scribe as well as the Remarkable 2, you might be able to read more without flipping quite as often if you are looking at larger textbooks, for instance. However, for things like novels, honestly, this is still a good enough experience and you have the benefit of just something much lighter and easier to hold without straining your hand quite as easily. And then I would say the overall PPI of the panel also looks to be decent. Nothing is too fuzzy and text still looks clear and sharp enough. Interestingly, when it comes to reading back PDFs, there's actually going to be a pop-up message that says, do you want to install kind of an APK file to read this type of document. This is an automatic process. It doesn't require you to find the app yourself from the store or anything like that. Just as a pop-up, you have to then hit on confirm. It'll take up a little bit more space on your device's memory. In this particular mode with a PDF, you are able to annotate on the note directly, including drawing. It actually has a very similar layout as the notebook that we saw there from earlier. So that's one thing to keep in mind. If you are looking at text or just EPUB files, you aren't able to doodle or draw on them, unlike PDFs in which you're able to kind of annotate as you would desire. And now for the final tab, if we jump into the web browser, you can see that surprisingly, it seems to function all right. The Wi-Fi reception quality was actually quite strong, I think because of the plastic chassis over here, but I can do some quick Google searches for things like say MobiScribe. If I click here and you can tell for, again, very simple web pages, it actually is a little bit faster than I was really expecting. That being said, this is definitely not gonna be your primary web browsing tool when it comes to the refresh rate of the screen in general, not being, as good as on a smartphone by any means, but you can still take a look at some quick news documents, check the stock, the weather information, and it seems to do okay. However, this particular screen does not seem to support multi-touch or perhaps that's a limitation of the software on purpose. So if you wanna zoom in and out, you have to do that via some of the additional controls here on the top. You can also favorite a particular page as well as search up different keywords in a page as well, very similar to the default Android web browser. Here's an example of a calculator app running on this. It's standard for Android, but somehow just seems really cool in that you're now using a ink calculator essentially. And jumping into the built-in Mobi store, we're able to find also some templates that we talked about earlier. So aside from music notes, as well as notepads, you can also find things for home use purposes, commercial, as well as gold and mindfulness for planning purposes as well. So if we actually jump inside, you can find even more templates that you may want to download and reuse. For instance, this one called Year in Review gives you a two column layout. Other ones give you a checklist that looks actually quite interesting. The templates are all relatively small in file size as well, as you can tell, only about 0.1 megabytes. So they're not too large at all and can be pretty easily and quickly downloaded. Then under the two tabs here, you can also download some recommended apps, including Kobo, Overdrive, and Kindle. You can also find under tools, Blue Mail email client on here. So if you wanted to check back emails and read them on a larger e-ink screen, you can do so on here. Again, very similar to a smartphone or tablet in that regard. So not a ton of recommended apps, but like we talked about, you can sideload any APKs yourself, go into the browser, go into somewhere like APK Peer, and just download it from there if you must. 
Uh, but overall, I would say the best use case for a system like this at the end of the day is still note taking and maybe looking back at some very simple ebooks, keeping things more light because of the relatively low end specs. So all in all, I have to say for pretty much the cheapest Wacom Active Stylus based e ink note taking device, the MobiScribe is surprisingly not shabby at all. So if you are able to find one floating around on the marketplace, again, for around sub $100, it might be worth considering if you don't need something as large as a Kindle or Remarkable. So you can learn more details if interested in the links down below. But for now, that's been our video. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews. That's been a closer look at this original generation MobiScribe.